Now listen, I said the Holy Spirit is a person, just like God the Father, just like the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, you can grieve the Holy Spirit. You can hurt the feelings of the Holy Spirit. You can quench, the Bible says, the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit. You can throw cold water on the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> you can hurt him and make him uh, uh, and resist him like you can the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to be careful. The unpardonable sin is all about that. All about resisting the Holy Spirit. In the context of the scripture in Matthew, where Jesus mentioned that uh, if you sin against the Holy Spirit, there's no forgiveness, he was speaking primarily to the Pharisees about how they had taken a work of the Holy Spirit and they had given credit to the devil for doing that. Jesus just healed a, a blind man and a man that couldn't speak. and so He couldn't do either one of those things. He's blind and couldn't speak. And Jesus walked by and he healed him. So he could see and he could speak. And the Pharisees said that, that he was doing that uh, by the power of the devil. And Jesus looked at them right then and said, Listen, the Holy Spirit's the one that did that through me. And if you give credit to the devil, you can never receive forgiveness for that. Now, in the context of, of how we deal with the Holy Spirit, you can keep resisting God's love and His presence and His power to a point where He leaves you alone. You can tell God you don't want to have anything else to do with Him. God will keep working with you. You can tell the Lord Jesus Christ, I don't believe everything in that, that all the stories that you how you fed 5,000 or how how you did all these things. Well, Jesus will forgive you. But if you tell the Holy Spirit, I don't want anything else to do with God. I don't want anything else to do with you. I don't want anything else to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't believe the, the Bible. I don't believe you. And I don't want anything to do with the Holy Spirit. You are committed the unpardonable sin. Mm. You are writing, you're, you're taking your name out of the Lamb's Book of Life. You'll never see heaven. You'll never see your loved ones. You'll never see people that have died and gone to heaven if you commit the unpardonable sin and resist Christ and resist God's Word and resist the Holy Spirit to a point that you tell Him you don't want anything else to do with Him. Now, I'm not talking about the mentally ill. I'm not talking about those that go into a depression and they lose a loved one and they get angry with God or they get angry with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's not committing the unpardonable sin. Like I said, God understands when we're at our lowest and He reaches down to bring us back up. Amen. And God will not leave you alone until you totally resist the Holy Spirit and, and, and walk away from Him. You know, there have been great men of God such as Billy Graham, like I said, uh, and other people, Dwight L. Moody and other people, uh, that admitted they do not understand everything there is to know about the Holy Spirit. And certainly, I can't get up here and tell you with a small amount of experience and Bible training that I've had that I know and understand all there is to know about the Holy Spirit. Because I don't. I know He's my friend. There's a lot of you that are my friends, and I don't understand you. <laughs> but you're still my friends. Well, I don't understand the Holy Spirit. Why He keeps working with some people, and why He lets things happen when uh, He can change them. I don't understand all that, but I love the Holy Spirit. He's my best friend. That's right. He's my, he, he, uh, he is one that instructs me and teaches me and give me power to stand in this pulpit. Without the Holy Spirit anointing me right now, I would just be a babbling words and you wouldn't understand what I'm saying and I wouldn't uh, understand what I'm saying. It would just be a lecture on biblical knowledge. But when you feel something, you know that that is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. When you feel that you need to repent of a sin that's going on in your life, you know that's the Holy Spirit. Amen. When you know that, that there is a work that you need to do to minister to somebody else and you are compelled to do it, you know that's the Holy Spirit talking to you. 
when there is somebody you need to forgive and something keeps telling you to forgive and get over it, that is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. It's not a man giving a lecture or a, a person trying to tell you a good philosophy out of this wonderful book, the Holy uh, Bible, but it is a Holy Spirit speaking to you. I would encourage you today, ask the Holy Spirit to empower you. He's already in you, but, you know, it would be like if I came to your house and and I had a friend of mine standing there and, and he was a multi-millionaire, but you didn't know it, and I came and knocked on your door and you said, come on in, Brother Mark, and you don't say anything to my friend. You just said, come on in, Mark. Well, my friend just walks in beside me because he, he wasn't invited, but, but he comes on in. And we sit down and you offer me a glass of tea. You don't say anything to my friend. You don't give my friend uh, a glass of tea or offer him anything. But this friend of mine doesn't need your tea because he's a multi-millionaire. And we have a conversation and we get ready to leave and you tell me goodbye. My friend that's standing next to me uh, walks out with me. You didn't know he was there. You didn't know he could pro provide all your needs for the rest of your life. You didn't know by a simple word of appreciation, gratitude, and love that this person would have met all your needs. He would have met all your financial needs. All you'd have to do is say, Brother Mark, who is that friend of yours? I'll say, this is my friend. He's a multi-millionaire. And you can look to that friend and say, you know, I'm really struggling with my light bill. I'm really struggling with my, uh, my finances. I don't have a job. I've been laid off. Uh, I wish I could find a job somewhere. I could talk to my friend. My friend said, look, I can hook you up. I can write you a check right now for all your bills. And, and uh, don't worry about it. Tomorrow when you go to the bank, you go to the mailbox, there'll be a check in there for you. Don't worry about it. I, uh, I'll help you with those doctor bills. I help you with those groceries. You see, you could have had all that, but instead, you ignored my friend. But I'm going to tell you who my friend is. He's the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't ignore him. Amen. Ask him for what your needs are. Please join me in prayer. Father, I come to you now and presenting this message as simply as I know how. In the experience that I've had with you, Many times I have knelt at the altar and cried and poured my heart out to you. And I have got up from the altar and my load was lighter. My heart was, was filled. My hope had been re-energized that I might be able to, to go and do the things that I needed to do. Lord, I have had nothing. I have been poor and I have had no groceries. And you have given, you have sent groceries to me. Lord, I have gone through loss of loved ones and people that I've cared about. And no one could comfort me, but you came and the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you comforted me. Thank you for that. Now bless us, Lord, as we have this invitation. Help our people to understand the power <coughs> and the, uh, the, the person of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, these are your people. I pray you reveal yourself to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I asked Tommy to come and read this and he have a big invitation. Oh.